Christ is risen. Good morning and a warm welcome to all. Special welcome on this party day, apparently. Uh, there's just a roar here in the sanctuary, which is awesome. It is good to have you here, uh, both in person and online. A special welcome to our guests and visitors joining us. My name is Glenn Schlecht. I'm the senior pastor here at Emmanuel. And uh, it is a day to celebrate. There are lots of great things. We've got a couple of uh, young people who will be confirming their faith. Three who did that in the early service. So we celebrate them. We celebrate being in God's presence. Uh, Sunday is just reason to celebrate. And so I am glad you're here as we continue on with our Words to Live By Easter series and diving into 1 Peter. And today what we are going to hear is uh, some pretty straight shooting. Peter talks very directly and says, you know what, there is this roaring lion and it's the devil who is out looking for someone, anyone, to devour. So this morning, as we delve into God's Word today, we're going to think about some of those uh, rather dangerous, I guess I would say, realities that are right there in front of us, as well as what the Lord has to say that we do in the midst of it. The short of it is, I'll give you a hint, it's to stand firm. Standing firm is what it's all about. So with that in mind, let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning, we come with grateful hearts once again, grateful for you, grateful for faith, grateful for Easter, grateful for the people that we are here together with. And Lord, as we've walked in these doors, you know what's on our hearts and on our minds. You know the, the burdens we may be carrying. And I pray that through our time together, you would speak into those needs, that you would open our ears, our hearts, and our minds, and provide for us what you know is needed most, right here, right now. We trust you and entrust ourselves to you in that confidence. And so we pray your blessing on us and our time together as we pray it in the powerful name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I invite all who are able to please stand as we begin with our invocation and call to worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we gather together humbly and in the presence of a mighty God. We come laying our worries and cares at the foot of the cross. We come with a desire to stay alert, to stand strong in our faith. May our presence here today be an encouragement to one another. Casting my cares aside, I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. Today is the day you have made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. I won't worry about tomorrow I'm trusting in what you say Today is the day Today is the day I'm putting my fears aside I'm leaving my doubts behind I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you Jesus Reaching my hands to yours, believing there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me is good. Today is the day you have made, I will 
rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Looking to Jesus is what a part of that standing firm is all about. And that's what we do. And as we come here at the beginning of worship to spend some time in confession, confessing our sins and putting ourselves before God, we are putting our hand, putting ourselves in Jesus' hands. We are setting our sights on Him. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Living in the joy of Christ's resurrection, let us turn to the risen Lord and confess our sin, first in the quiet of our hearts, and then together in the spoken confession.
Lord God, we confess that we are by nature doubting and distrustful. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have failed to live our lives in a way that proclaims the power of the resurrection. We have lost the zeal of the women who first proclaimed that the crucified one is risen indeed. Forgive us, dear Lord. And take these resurrection promises to heart from 1 Peter chapter 1. In his great mercy, God has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you. With great resurrection joy, I announce that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us the spirit of truth whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear from God in his word. Today's first reading is from Acts 1, 6 through 14. Then the disciples gathered around Jesus and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the time or the date the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he had said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Today's epistle reading is 1 Peter 4, 12-14, and 5, 6-11. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and God rests on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Today's gospel reading is John 17, 1 through 11. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. 
For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those who you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on this earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of this world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given them, given me, comes from you. For I have given, for I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And could I have the children come on forward for this morning's children's message? Any parents or adults who want to join, you're welcome to come up as well. So today, I'm actually going to have you stand up. So if you haven't sat down yet, don't even do it. Stand up. So we're going to see how long we can balance on one foot. Ready? Go. How long do you think you could do it? A minute, two minutes, three seconds. Now, what if I tried to push Sam down? Do you think it'd be easy or hard to push Sam down right now? That was fake, that wasn't that bad. Okay, <laughs> now put both feet down. <laughs> put both feet down. How long do you think you could stand like this? Forever, for a long time. Do you think it'd be easier or harder to push Sam down right now? He faked that one too, he shouldn't have even moved. <laughs> and so, today we're talking all about standing firm in the promises that God has given us. That we know that his Bible, the Bible, his word, is filled with truth about who he is and what he promises. And those things that he promises, that he's always gonna love us, and he's always gonna take care of us, and that what he says is the truth is the very most important thing that we need to stand firm in. So when things get hard, and that's like we're wobbling on our one foot, we can be reminded that we can stand firm in who God says we are and in who he says he is and that we know that he keeps his promises. So there's a little song that a lot of you probably know and it goes, the B-I-B-L-E, I guess that's the book for me. Today we're gonna sing, I'm standing firm on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Now, if you want, you can spell out Bible with our hands. So everyone put your hands up. Everyone can put your hands up, you can do this. It goes B I B L. E. All right, so I do not want to be the only one singing. You guys should sing louder than me. So we're going to sing it. Ready? It goes the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I'm standing firm on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Good job. We're going to do it, and we're going to go even louder the second time. Ready? The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I'm standing firm on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Wow, you guys are beautiful singers. All right, so we are going to thank God that he has given us his promises to stand firm on, that we know that he is there for us always and that he keeps his promises. So fold your hands, bow your heads, and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you so much for always keeping your promises and giving us the Bible as the reminder of your promises. Help us to stand firm and remember your truth. Amen. All right, you can go sit down. <laughs> Christ is risen. Now, dear friends, 
Do not be surprised at the fiery ordeals that come to you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Those words written some 2,000 years ago by the disciple Peter, writing to fellow believers who are undergoing tremendous amounts of persecution at that time because of their faith, because of their connection to Jesus. Those very same words are so apropos for us in our world and our lives and our times today, aren't they? Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that are coming on you to test you as though something strange were happening. These fiery ordeals, they're real. And they are pretty significant. In fact, I want to stop right now and on the front end of the message today give you a chance to start thinking about what are some of those fiery ordeals that are going on right here today in our lives and in our world. So take a moment, think about that. As always, if you're comfortable talking with the people around you, have some conversation, brainstorm a little bit about some of these fiery ordeals and what they entail for us today. Please. All right, this morning I'm not going to solicit your responses, but I'm going to share a few things that came to mind that I was thinking about as I was getting ready for this morning. And I'm guessing that we may have a little overlap between some of the fiery ordeals that we're thinking about. So what are these fiery ordeals or what might they entail in our lives and our world today? Let's start with the government the government, and what feels like a growing antagonism toward the church, toward people of faith, toward so much of what we hold and believe to be true from God's Word. The Colorado Teachers Union, just a couple of weeks ago, laid out and determined it it was their role, or it is their role, to dismantle capitalism. Seeing that as one of the great evils of our society today, and they tie into that the rationale of it's tied to systemic racism, it's tied to history, it is tied to family. Speaking of family, There are a growing number of bills and policies, not only in our state, but in states across the Union, that are set up right now to take away parental rights and parental roles, particularly in our schools, saying that that role now belongs to the government. We have, of course, gender and sexuality issues. These agendas, quite honestly, that are being inappropriately and quite nefariously 
introduced to children as young as kindergarten, but throughout the entire public education system, through drag queen reading times, through very inappropriate books at some grade levels in our school libraries, genderless bathrooms and locker rooms, hearing again recently of clubs that are masquerading as one thing only to find out that they are a platform for gender conversations that are going on without the knowledge, outside of the ears and the eyes of parents, and so much more. And these things with regard to gender and sexuality, what are they doing? They're raising in these young children and older children uncertainty, questions, confusion, doubt about what God has said very clearly in regard to who and how He has made them. And then just this last week, I heard that Facebook pulled down a post that simply said, Jesus died so you could live. And they took it down, labeling it as hate speech. No, we shouldn't be surprised at what's happening. We shouldn't. Why? Back in the first century, 2,000 years ago, Peter laid this out for us already. Chapter 5, verse 8 of 1 Peter, he said, Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's prowling. He's roaring. And he is devouring anything, everything, and anyone he possibly can through his lying, his deceiving, and his manipulative, scheming ways. While we shouldn't be surprised at what is happening, we do need to be aware what we as followers of Jesus are called to do is actually not just be aware, but what Peter expresses for us and the Lord lays out for us pushes us far beyond simple awareness that we need to have of our culture and of our world today. He pushes us into action. There is an expectation, the Lord's words, words to live by, that we have in today's reading in First Peter. Chapter 5 include going beyond awareness means be self-controlled, be alert, resist the devil, stand firm in the faith. Now, like it or not, we're in a battle. We are. It is a battle. It may not have seemed that intense years past, but all these issues and so much more have been racing to the forefront. And it is a battle today. A battle in which we as followers of Jesus Christ need to contend for the faith. We're here to be self-controlled, to be alert, to resist the devil, stand firm in the faith, not apologize for our faith, not be a doormat for our society, and not be passive when it comes to living our faith, when it comes to speaking of Jesus. Now, over the past weeks, we've been reminded very clearly of who we are in Jesus. And this is right out of Peter's letter. And it all makes sense that Peter wanted us to understand clearly and with a purpose who we are in Christ. We are children of God. We are a chosen people, a holy priesthood, 
a, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. We are loved dearly by God. And He has claimed us as His sons and daughters that through the waters of baptism we are the very children of God. Are we perfect? No, we're not perfect. In the big picture of things, we need to remember and acknowledge that, yes, we're sinful people. Yes, we're broken people. But are we forgiven? Absolutely. Are we restored? Yes. We are a people in process through faith in Jesus. And we are a people who are in the mighty hands of our all-powerful and all-loving God and Savior. But so much of what we find ourselves up against today in our culture, in our neighborhoods, in our schools, in the places that we hang out, they raise some anxiety. They even cause us to be afraid, scared, confused, not sure what we're supposed to do or where we're supposed to go. When we fall to the temptations that are in front of us, and yeah, even as followers of Jesus, we're not perfect. Temptations come our way, and there are times that we trip, we fall. We recognize the sin inside of us, the sin all around us, the evil that is so obvious and evident with our eyes wide open. And even, we can talk about pride, sinful pride. Peter addressed that in today's reading too, because he knew that was an issue. You know, don't get yourself too high and mighty said, humble yourselves under God's mighty hand. Be humble. But remember who you are. Okay? It's not apologizing. It's not, not doormat. It's not being passive. It's being assured that we are people of God, saved by faith in Jesus Himself. But when those times come, when fears rise up, when anxiousness, and we're feeling that, when we're confused, the Lord and His words to live by lay out for us pretty clearly what to do. He assures us. He knows what's going on. He understands what we're going through. And He gets how difficult this can be. And so He said, humble yourselves under God's mighty hand, knowing that He will lift you up in due time. And his invitation that follows that is a powerful one. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Promises, assurances that he gives to us that we live our lives in that humility, in that love, in that care that God has promised to us. It was that love that motivated Jesus to do exactly what he did. To come into his own world. To become a part of his creation. To ultimately lay down his life of his own will and die on that cross. That was his love. That was the care that he had for us. Because through that cross comes forgiveness comes hope, comes life. He reminds us time and time again that He is the Mighty One. He is the Conqueror. He is the Victor. He is the Deliverer. He is the One who has defeated that roaring lion once and for all. The thing is, while we know the victory is ours, the battle rages on. 
And it will rage on until Christ returns again. But we're not alone. We heard in Jesus' prayer in John 17, and that was a prayer that he prayed in the upper room on that Thursday night before he would go to the cross. What's called the high priestly prayer. We got the first part of it. And he's reminding us, Jesus is reminding us as we are listening in on his conversation with his Father to know that the words Jesus has given to us, they're not just Jesus' words. He said, Father, the words you gave me, I gave to them. And they believe. They believe our words. He said, I'm praying for you. He said, we heard Kimberly read, I'm not praying for the world. He would pray for the world a little later. That would come later on in the prayer. But he said, I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for these that you gave me. That's us. He was praying for you and me on that night before he would go to the cross. Praying that we would be protected in the power of his name. We are not alone. No matter what it is that we find ourselves facing and up against. We heard him promise, and we heard it in the first reading in Acts, the sending of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. And this Holy Spirit brings those words to live by, these words of truth to our minds again and again and again. That's a big part of what his work is. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, standing on God's Word, standing in God's truth, that is exactly how we can be self-controlled, alert. It's how we can resist the devil. And it's how we can stand firm in the faith. It's not easy. And it won't be easy but it is not impossible. Through faith in Jesus, our believing, our trusting in Him as Lord and in Him as our Savior, our Deliverer, we're never alone. It's in Jesus, and by Him, we're told, that we are made strong, firm, and steadfast. So let's stand together. Let's stand firm in our Savior together in those words that He's given us to live by. How do we stand together? We do it right here. Continue to worship together. Come, let the Spirit speak His words of truth into our ears, into our hearts, and into our lives. Be in Bible study. Continue to delve into God's Word together. Spend time yourself reading it, digesting it, taking it to heart. And as we have throughout this series, uh, today's words to live by are on your Bring It Home devotion. Go ahead and pull that insert out. It'll also be up on the screen. But as I've been encouraging throughout this words to live by series, cut this little box out, put it someplace where you're going to see it all week long. Read it multiple times a day. Work at it. Memorize it. Put God's Word into your mind, into your head, into your heart, and let it translate then into our lives. Let's go ahead and read these words together. It's on two screens but from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses... What is it? There it is. 6 to 9. <laughs> Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith 
because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And that 1 Peter 5, verses 6 to 9. And I want to leave you not with my words, but with our Lord's words. At the very end of this reading, verses 9 and 10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you've suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. For Christ is risen. And speaking of confessing our faith, Natalie Carter, if you would come on up, join me as you stand in front of your confirmation stoles. And the opportunity for the two of you, as well as your three classmates who did this at the 8 o'clock service, are here to stand firm, to speak those words that were spoken over you so long ago at your baptism, to stand before God, your family, your friends, and to say, yes, I believe. I believe in Jesus, and I am ready to stand firm. Now, Jesus, before he returned to heaven, said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. You've been baptized. You've been taught the faith according to the Lord's command. The fulfillment of his command we now celebrate with thankful hearts, rejoicing to confess the faith into which you were baptized and which you yourselves will now confess before the church and before our Lord himself. Today, these young people know what it means to, that they were baptized. And they know that baptism means God is calling them out into the field. They are not graduating. They are confirming their faith and being commissioned. They are not finished. They are moving on to the next stage in this journey of faith and of their lives. And they want to express these desires among you today. Jesus says, whoever confesses me before others... I will also confess them before my Father in heaven. That is what confirmation is all about. Confirming the Spirit-given faith in your hearts, and now they want to share that with all of us today. So I ask you, do you today acknowledge that when you were baptized, you were given God's gifts, including the opportunity to be part of His mission? Do you renounce the devil? constantly striving with the Holy Spirit's help to turn away from sin and turn toward God's grace? Do you believe in God the Father? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? You just affirm the faith into which you were baptized, but it doesn't stop there. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to endure everything, even death itself, rather than fall away from your faith? Do you believe that the Bible is God's true word and confess the teachings of the Lutheran Church as you've learned to know them from the small catechism to be faithful and true? And do you intend faithfully to conform all your life to God's word, to be diligent in your attention to it in public worship and in private, to make frequent use of the Lord's Supper, being faithful in the use of both God's word and the sacraments, which are his means of grace, and in faith, word, and action to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit until the day of your death? I invite parents to
to come on forward and stand by your son or daughter. I never want to ignore the fact that parents are the biggest influence on their children. And these young people wouldn't be here if it weren't for the faithfulness of you. Parents, please pick up your child's stole. And I ask you, do you intend to continue to pray for your child, to support your child in the Christian life, and to encourage them in appropriate forms of Christian fellowship? If so, please place the stole on your child and say, yes, with the help of God. In confirmands, I will come to each of you one at a time. I'll start with you, Carter, and invite you to kneel, and I will speak your confirmation verse over you. Carter Nelson, Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. Natalie Nicole Sechrist, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And now we want to say a prayer and a blessing over the two of you. And so I invite up any other family, friends, godparents, sponsors, small group, whoever is here, stand up, make your way up. Carter and Natalie, if you'd back up just a little bit so your family can surround you and be a part of you. Family, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. So, friends and members of the congregation as a whole, please repeat after me. May our Father in heaven, for the sake of Jesus, his Son, refresh you with his love each day and pour out the Holy Spirit on you, making you strong and faithful and helping you daily bring honor to God in all your actions. We ask that God would use each of you according to His purposes and utilize each of your unique gifts to bring others to know and believe in Jesus as their Savior. And then let's join in praying together the prayer on the screen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing each of these young people to know you as Lord and Savior. Help them to continue strong and faithful throughout their lives as you send them out in Jesus' name with your grace, your forgiveness, and your love to tell others about you. In Jesus' name, we ask it. Amen. And let's praise God for what he has done, what he's doing, and what he will do in these young people. And Natalie and Carter, the Lord bless you and keep you. Now, as you stand firm in this confession of your faith, knowing Jesus is with you. The promises that he has made to you are true. You are not alone, nor will you ever be. Stand firm in your faith. Stand strong in him, knowing that he will always be with you. Go in that peace and in that assurance. Amen. You may return to your seats.
time of offering is what we continue with, and a time of offering has always been a part of the worship of God's people. Not a time of guilt, arm twisting, begging for money, but a time to say thank you. A time for us through our offerings, whether they're left in the baskets out in the atrium, given through the website, the app, or texting, it serves the same purpose. An opportunity to just pause for a moment and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you've given, and all that is right here before us. We continue with our time of prayer. A number of requests that we have this morning. Praying, of course, for our confirmands, including them. Then also today we pray for Ellen Zercher and her family. Uh, Ellen found out that her three-week-old great great-grandson died on Tuesday. He was born on May 1st and died of unknown causes. We pray for this family that the Lord would provide strength and peace during this very difficult, very tragic time for them. Prayers also for David Westfall as he's dealing with heart issues. For Cheryl Neinfeld's brother Mark, who's been in the hospital with lots of testing going on. For Lynn and Ken Schott's brother-in-law, who's undergoing treatment for recently diagnosed leukemia. And also for Lynn's cousin, needing uh, his physical needs following two joint replacement surgeries. I want to pray for Beth Gentry's 29-year-old daughter, Courtney, in Knoxville, Tennessee. She suffered a seizure on Friday uh, after a lot of testing. She was released from the hospital. There does not appear to be any permanent damage, but prayers for God's healing to come. We pray for Ed Bublitz's wife, Cindy, following her hospitalization, testing, and procedures with her heart and other concerns. Uh, thankfully, she seems to be doing well. She was able to return home last Sunday night. We pray for Scott Seifert's sister-in-law, who's having a delicate surgery on Wednesday with a long recovery period following. And also from Alex Schnegelberger, a uh, dear friend of his, Karen, she was taken to the hospital and they found that she has blood clots in her lungs and under her arm. Prayers for her healing. Then ongoing prayers for Missy Foss, Sharla Layton, Ray and Bernice Zimmerman, Bob Angus, for Tessa, for Gary and Carlita Gossel, for Rayleigh Clyden. And then prayers of Thanksgiving. Uh, last Thursday, Jerry and Jackie Bodecker celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. And on that same day, their granddaughter Ari celebrated her 16th birthday. We pray for Judy Robertson, who tomorrow will celebrate her 80th birthday. And then in our ministry together, uh, we pray for our, our school. Our preschoolers graduated this past Wednesday. Our eighth graders graduated on Thursday. And prayers also for safety on their class trip this week as they head out tomorrow. And then for all college and high school graduations, some have happened, some are coming up. Uh, prayers that all those who are traveling will be safe and the celebrations wonderful. And of course, we continue to pray for our community, country, our world, and the many needs that are there. So let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we come to you as a God who not only created us and made us to be the people that we are, but a God who has done everything for us, absolutely everything. You know us and know us well. And so we lay before you these requests, these needs that we have, and not only those that I've mentioned, but many others, people and circumstances in life that we're aware of that we've carried into this time of worship together. Lord, we pray as we put ourselves into your mighty hands, that being the mighty and powerful God that you are, that you would provide what you know is needed for these times and for these circumstances, for the joys and celebrations in our lives, for the gift of love and marriage and anniversaries, for the gift of birth 
of baptism, of birthdays, of rebirth, of confirmation. And Lord, there are so many things that bring smiles to our faces, these joys in our life. And we know these flow from your hand and your heart. And we praise and thank you for those blessings. So Lord, we commend these people that we've mentioned and people on our hearts today to you, putting them into your mighty hands, praying that you would provide what is needed right now. Lord, in your mercy, for this ministry of yours here at Emmanuel, we thank you that we get to be a part of it. We thank you for students going through a a time of instruction and being able to stand here today and confirm their faith. We thank you for Sunday school classes, for Bible studies. We thank you for various small groups, for opportunities we have from our youngest children to our oldest adults to be engaged in your word. Lord, continue strengthening us for this battle in which we're engaged. You know what is needed, and I pray that you would help us put ourselves in places where we can keep growing, where we can stand firm, where we can resist the devil. So, Lord, thank you for your ministry. And we humbly but boldly pray for your blessing on us that we continue to share your great good news and the hope you've given to us with many more in our community and beyond. Lord, in your mercy, and for this world in which we live, there is so much heartache, so much trouble. We pray for our own community, for the many issues that we we see all around us. We pray for all those who are struggling, following various natural disasters around our country and world, and so many man-made evils that are perpetrated over and over again. Lord, use us as your people to speak hope as we are able into these situations, to show your love that is real, and to be people of the Word and to be people of Jesus. Lord, we also pray for those who lead us. We pray for President Biden, for all of our elected and appointed officials throughout every level of our government. We pray that you would guide and direct them Help them to govern wisely and well, not on their own agendas or their own whims or their own desires, but on the foundation of you, your word, your truth. And Lord, we also pray for those who look out for us. We pray for all those serving in our many health care professions, for law enforcement, first responders, firefighters, and those serving in our armed forces. Thank you for these men and women willing to put themselves in harm's way for us, our health, safety, well-being, and the freedoms we enjoy. Give them purpose and a sense of direction as they carry out their various jobs, responsibilities, duties, and missions, that what they do, they would do for you. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as many of you know, we celebrate the Lord's Supper here at Emmanuel most every Sunday. And we do that not out of habit, ritual, or empty tradition, but we do that because it is here at the Lord's table. As the Lord invites us to come, that we receive from Him more than what we know is needed. That it is the Lord who gives us strength in our faith, the Lord who forgives us and assures us of his many promises. For our Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. If there are any of you here today wondering whether or not you should come and receive the Lord's Supper, would you ask yourself these four questions? First, do you know Jesus? Do you believe in him, trust in him as Lord and Savior? Second, do you acknowledge the sin and brokenness in your own heart, in your own life, and desire what the Lord offers here? Forgiveness, healing, strength. Third, do you believe our Lord's words? Profound, mysterious words that we can't fully explain, but we believe it to be true. That what we receive today is bread and wine, and we also believe that it is the very body and blood of Jesus. And finally, fourth, would it be your intention with the Holy Spirit to work in your heart that you would look for those opportunities to stand firm in your faith, to speak boldly of the love and life and hope that Jesus has come to bring. If you answered yes to these questions, you're invited to come. We have our two serving stations on either end of the communion rail, children and young people. Steve, could you turn me up just a little bit? Children and young people not yet instructed in the Lord's Supper, you're invited to come for a blessing. Or if there are adults who would prefer simply to receive a blessing today, please come with your hands folded to indicate that. Otherwise, have your hands cupped to receive the bread. My friends, the table is ready, and the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live. ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever block me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. I believe that the power of the gospel still makes the broken whole. I believe that the curse of sin was broken when they rolled away that stone. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you, Lord, I will rise in confidence, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in, no matter where I go, and no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm believe that the walls will stop falling when we fall down on our knees i believe that the lame will go walking and the blind are gonna see i believe that the gates of hell tremble when the church begins to sing i believe i believe i believe as i bow before you I will rise in confidence. I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in. Cause no matter where I go, and no matter where I've been, I will see your goodness, Lord, in the land I'm living in.
friends in Christ, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeals that come to us to test us as though something strange were happening. The Lord is here. Cast our cares on Him. Humble ourselves before Him. And as we have received and celebrated this gift of God, let it accomplish in us what we know He has come to do. Assure us of our forgiveness, of His love, and of His ongoing presence. And as you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you His peace. Amen. So once again, thank you so much for being here, both in person and online. I do pray that we stand strong against all that is going on, assured that we're not alone. Not now, not ever. We're in the mighty hands of a mighty Savior and a powerful God. By way of announcements, a couple of things. First of all, next Sunday we are moving to our summer schedule, Memorial Weekend. That means this service will start at 9.30. So make a note of that. 8 and 9.30, all indoors until July when we'll move out. But for now, just a time change. Uh, secondly, make sure and check the tables in the atrium. A number of things going on. Again, we've got the car sale, our car show t-shirt pre-sale. Uh, we've got some awesome shirts that have been designed, put together for that. Uh, stop and see Randy out at the table in the atrium for that. And also, uh, Miss Martha had mentioned, remind them about Vacation Bible School. She told me we've got 150 kids signed up as of right now. And that means that board back there, it needs to be empty. So all the supplies, all the various things that are needed, stop by if you would, check it out, see if there's some things you can grab, pick up, help be a part of this because that number is only going to grow over the next month. And then uh, we have a special voting assembly that we have scheduled for a week from Wednesday. That'll be Wednesday, May 31st at 6.30. Purpose of that meeting is to hear more about the possible start of a high school here. We, are, we have gone to our leadership, shared that with our leaders, and we are now going to bring that to the congregation. So if you can, please come. Be a part of that a week from Wednesday, 6.30. It'll be right here in the sanctuary. And as many of you know, the best way to stay up on everything are through my email updates. I share celebrations that we've had, talk about what's coming up and how we can help be a part and engage in all of that. If you're not in that email group, but would like to be, stop at our information station, which is just to the left out in the atrium, Grab a welcome card, give me your email address, your name, we'll get you added in. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. It's a transition Sunday. We're, we're going to do a little bit of our Easter series, Words to Live By. There'll be one more Bible passage to memorize. And we're starting our, we're dipping our toe into our summer series, which is called Life in the Spirit. It's complicated. So, we're going to talk a little bit more about the work of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit in our world and in our lives today. Hope you can join me. Until then, Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.